Let's do it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would start a weekly reading vlog. This is starting just a little bit later than I was hoping. I was kind of hoping that like I would get up in the morning and I would start this vlog and like it'd all be great and everything. Unfortunately it didn't go that way because I got my exam results and I failed, meaning that I have to reset um, the hardest exam that I've ever had to do in my life, which obviously like that sucks. Um, the timing also sucks considering it is currently my summer holiday, the like longest amount of time that I've had off for the last six months. And I was just really looking forward to reading and making videos and just, you know, not having to stress. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. We we're gonna skip over that because I like don't want that to be the main thing of my vlog. Like I don't want to be talking about how sad I am all the time. I did just wanna say that I don't know how much I'm gonna be reading, but I still wanted to weekly vlog. I just thought it'd be a nice time to do it. I hope you enjoy this vlog nonetheless. And let's just get straight into the book that I most recently finished. Right, so <laughs> this is my sister. Ow! You fucked me in the eye. I thought it was up your nose. The the book that I most recently finished was The Last Flight by someone that I can't remember what her name is. Judy Clark. I read it on the iPad. I read it as an ebook and it's a thriller and I was kind of expecting more than I got from it. I ended up giving it 2.5 stars because it was just I don't know, I think it had a lot of potential. What are you doing? <laughs> 2.5. Selma. <laughs> I think it had a lot of potential, but it was just... I don't know, it fell flat for me. I think that there were just too many storylines, or like, there was two main storylines, and I think if the author had have just focused on one and then used the other storyline as more of like a mystery element, it would have been a lot more interesting. Um, but we just kind of, we got these two storylines which um, intersect at the very beginning, but you just get everything from both perspectives and it just takes all the mystery, all the suspense, all the stuff that you you kind of hope for from a thriller, that it takes it away. So what are you doing? Like, Leave that alone, please. I would just want to see what the cover looks like. It, it looks like a woman, okay? I would still recommend it. It was not a book that I found boring at all. There wasn't, like, I read it, I think, relatively quickly. But... I don't know, it just felt like, I don't know if I was just being harsh, sometimes I, I feel like I can be quite harsh on thrillers. Now I've decided to pick up... Selma, can you read it? Uh, not from the, uh, Mexican? Yeah. New York Times. No, you don't read that bit, you just read the white bits. <laughs> Gothic. 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 Yes, by... Silva. Sylvia. Sylvia. Um... Moria. Moreno. Moreno Garanca. Garcia, okay. Garcia. Wait, let me um, see again. Sevilla Moreno Garcia. Yeah, so I decided to, oh god, you can't see it. That's what it looks like. I think everyone knows what it looks like at this point, anyone that watches booktube. It's been like all over booktube. So I think that it's supposed to be horror and it's supposed to be like, I guess, gothic horror, seeing as it's called Mexican Gothic and it's essentially about this girl I want to say her name is Noemi or something like that. This uh, this cousin calls up and basically says that there's something shady going on and that she thinks her husband is trying to poison her. So Noemi has to go and live with her. Um, and I think things happen and then it's kind of like that question of is it really the way that the cousin thinks it's going? Like is it really her husband that's shady or is there maybe something paranormal going on? I think from what I've heard but like I haven't heard a lot of people speak about this I feel like it's very hit or miss some people say that they didn't enjoy it and some people say that they really loved it so I'm just looking forward to seeing how that goes I've only read like a couple of pages so far so I don't really know I'm gonna check in when I've read some more as I said I don't know how often I'm gonna be updating this vlog just because I'm gonna be busy but we'll see oh do you want to talk about your book Sam's how far are you in? That's good. 79. I'm reading How to Train Your Dragon by... Cressida. Cressida? Okay. Like Simon Cowell. Cowell. And in the book it does say by Hiccup... Look. By Hiccup... Horrendous. Horrendous. Haddock. Haddock 3. The third. The third. Do you want to show the cover? 
It's um, a picture of a dragon. Mm -hmm. Are you enjoying it? It's a tiny bit boring. It's a tiny bit boring? That's not good. So I haven't updated the vlog since like Monday. What's today? Today's Wednesday. Today's an exciting day, isn't it, Selma? Yeah. Why is it exciting? Because Denmark's going to lose to England in football. <laughs> So England and Denmark are playing against each other in the semi-finals for the Euros and it's very exciting for us because we are half Danish and half English, give or take. Um, and we lived in England for a while and, and then we moved to Denmark so we're very much connected to both countries. So I mean either way we win, don't we? But we, me and Selma want, want England to win because we're cool. And then mark off babies. Some don't say that. I wanted to just update you guys on the book that I've been reading, Mexican Gothic. I think I'm about 150 pages into it, so I am nearly halfway, I think, and I've been really enjoying it. I can 100% see why people say, it, like, why people enjoy it and stuff like that. I really like the Gothic vibes. It's can you not do that, please? I just need it's to <laughs> it's reminding me a bit of the Haunting of Hill House, the way that the kind of like horror element is approached, because it feels almost as if it creeps up on you, as opposed to like just being very blatant and sort of in your face. Oh, Selma, you're so uncomfortable. Okay, yeah, thanks. From what I remember of The Haunting of Hill House, like it's not the, it's not the same like, storyline or anything like that because it is kind of set around a creepy house and like it's that question of is the main character seeing things um, or are things actually happening? You know, that kind of trying What's to figure out. That noise? I think that like the approach, the sort of gothic element uh, really reminds me of that. You can clearly tell that the author has been really inspired by the sort of classic gothic literature because I mean she actually mentions Wuthering Heights and um, Jane Eyre as like being one of the character's favourite books. I really like the main character because she's very different to how I am. She's kind of described as like a, a socialite that really likes to go out and sort of I don't know, she just, she isn't following the path that everyone wants her to follow. She's really interested, especially because it's set in the 50s in Mexico, I think. So she's not following the path that, of the socialite. She's not like settling down, finding a husband and stuff like that. Instead, she wants to, you know, continue her education. She wants to kind of just have fun and mess about. And it's very interesting to read that. It hasn't scared me as such. There's definitely been parts where i've been there's been a bit of tension um which has been really fun to read but like it hasn't been super scary i don't know i think that's kind of the thing with gothic literature i find is that it's not like blatantly scary it's definitely not the same as modern horror because it is kind of rooted in a lot of classic horror which didn't start off as being about you know jump scares and sort of getting people scared as soon as possible it's more about sort of building an atmosphere and creating suspense and tension through the atmosphere in particular and I think it's definitely doing that. There's a lot of talk of like graveyards and the, just the setting of the house. You can tell that there's something going on even if it's like not haunted, even if it's just a completely normal house. It just, it feels very big and very empty and they're like there's certain rules that she has to adhere to. Samuel, what are you doing? I'm making like... <clears throat> pictures in their head of public school. Anyway, yes. I've been talking I've been talking for a while, so I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna get my hair cut tonight, which is very exciting, so I will probably show you guys that at some point. And yeah. So I'll stop dancing. I'm not dancing, I'm showing them what hair like you want. Yeah, I'm gonna get it cut pretty short. I've had it short before. But I'm excited for that to finally have it changed a little bit. And I'm gonna go now. Bye. It's coming home, England. It's coming home. It's currently like 2 o'clock, 
vlog. I've been editing, uploading, and doing some work that I needed to get done. Um, but now I want to sit down and just like make myself a cup of tea and try and read as much as I can because I wanted to be further along with Mexican Gothic than I am but I'm just I don't know why I have to do exams again I as I explained before and I hate it <laughs> I hate it so much it just it's not even like the actual exam it's just like the whole time leading up to it when I know I've got an exam my brain just doesn't function properly and I'm like honestly if anyone has tips for studying like how you get yourself to study because I it's not even like I procrastinate my brain just kind of turns off and it's like it can't but I've been trying my best and obviously I will try my best I'm gonna try and sit down and read and try and get this book done I think I think I've got like 100 pages left so I think that that is doable maybe <laughs> i don't know but i'm gonna update you one thing that i forgot to mention about mexican gothic that i was really enjoying is the kind of like history that's woven into it so it's set in the 1950s i want to say or the 1960s around about that time and it really it talks about like the family history of this the family that lives in this house it also like in general sort of weaves in history i always love when a fictional book can weave in some history and like give you a little bit of knowledge and information without making it seem like it's non-fiction because I think that you can so easily go too heavy on it and then it just makes it boring but I feel like the author is doing quite well with this one very much enjoying it and yeah as I said I'm gonna get back to you in a bit hey Kessler look no puppy <laughs> why are you being crazy what's this come on Kessler hello so Kessler is it Kisla? I read up until chapter 21 of Mexican Gothic and I just, I'm confused. Um, so basically like all the updates that I did before, I was like saying I'm enjoying it and you know, like I, I definitely am enjoying it. Like I think that it's a very interesting book and it's definitely not boring, but I'm also just confused. I definitely feel like the book has taken a turn that I did not expect especially because it's mexican gothic i thought it would follow the sort of traditional gothic route and to be fair i haven't read all that much gothic literature so it could totally be that like a lot of gothic literature takes this route as well but like i don't think it does from what i've read and from what i've heard i don't think that this feels very traditional which makes sense because it is obviously a modern book the main character like keeps on having like these weird dreams hallucinations like she can't figure out what it is and things just happen and they're written in a way that makes it feel very real to the character which it probably does but like it's written in a way that makes it feel that it's real so i can never tell when she's like in these dream states and when she's like in the real world and like what's actually going on and then all of a sudden this explanation just came out of nowhere like <laughs> i didn't even know it didn't feel like it was building up to an explanation i've still got like 100 pages left it honestly just did not feel like it was the right time once again that could just be me that's confused but like i just didn't feel like it was supposed to be there it just sort of felt like it came out of the blue you know it just kind of smacked me in the face and i was like ah but as soon as the explanation did happen and like as soon as i found out why these things were happening it like it's very far-fetched i think personally especially with the setting and everything i think that it's a bit out there however it doesn't it's not like completely not making sense because it's been set up so i don't think it's completely out there but it was also just i don't know it felt like a bit of a u-turn a u-turn i don't know if that, it felt like a bit of like a just going off on a different tangent and i'm completely fine with it i like weird stuff so i can get on board with it but also i was just a bit taken aback i'm not gonna lie and there are a few things where i was like oh that is weird and i'm usually not like that usually i can once again get on board with the weird stuff like it doesn't really phase me but i was you know a little bit shocked um but it's it's been fun i really just if you have any if you've read mexican gothic or if you've read anything that's kind of like that uh sort of surreal like weird kind of horror then please leave it down in the the comment section because i would love to read more of these kind of books but i'm going to carry on reading and hopefully understand this a little bit more because 
as much as I'm fine with not understanding things, if I can understand them, you know, that's a bonus. Is that gonna be a new intro? Carla's gonna dye my hair. That's me. <laughs> and I hope it doesn't go really badly because I'll have to live with it and she won't. done now it isn't quite as dark as i hoped but i think i kind of just wanted to get the majority of the red out so it's done that i'm very happy you can't really like see the difference on camera i don't think because for some reason when i whenever i record anything it just looks darker like when i had my sort of more red hair it looked more red in real life than it did on camera so you might not be able to see the difference but it is definitely more brown than it was before so i'm very happy about that and uh <laughs> i didn't end up finishing the book obviously because i always say i'll do something and then i don't i want to try and get some more reading done as i said but i don't know if i will but i will keep you updated good morning for a very sleepy looking chloe last night i ended up staying up relatively late so now i'm I mean, it's like nearly 10 o'clock, so I think I did all right to get up now. But I am going to try and finish Mexican Gothic because I didn't finish it last night. I don't think that's a surprise. But no, yeah, I'm going to try and finish that now because I think I potentially only have like 50 pages left. I think I'm not quite sure. I made myself coffee. I'm going to sit and read that. But I just wanted to talk to you guys about something very exciting. Come here. Come on, Kisla. Anyway, oh, I wanted to talk to you about something very exciting that I have been wanting <laughs> to talk about for ages, but I just, you know, we haven't been in the right stage to do that. And finally, last night, I was able to get all our socials up and running. And when I say R, I mean me and some of my booktube friends. Basically, along with some of my booktube friends, I've been working on a readathon that is inspired by all of our favourite horror movies and like Halloween movies, spooky movies, things like that and it's gonna naturally be running for the whole month of October because obviously that is spooky season and I'm just really excited for it. <laughs> Honestly I've just been, I've wanted to talk about it for ages and that's why I'm already kind of semi-announcing it like four months <laughs> in advance. If that readathon sounds interesting to you then make sure you go and follow our Instagram. Our Instagram is Fright Movies Readathon and our Twitter is Fright at Movies. I'm super excited for this to happen. It's gonna be really fun and I'm just such a big fan of horror movies like it's my favourite genre. We're making sure to include very iconic movies so stay tuned for that but yeah i just wanted to say that and now i'm going to try and finish my book and i will update you when i have i have now finished mexican gothic i am still not sure what rating i'm going to give it just because i don't know i think it's somewhere between a three and a four star I, no actually no the thing is I really enjoyed it, it's definitely not five stars for me because I just didn't get that five star feeling, I didn't feel as connected to the characters or like the main character that, uh, as I would have liked to. As I said before I got quite confused <laughs> at parts which like I don't know if that's me or if it's the actual book and the way it was written that's confusing or what it was but like I just was confused but I did understand like I understand what was going on now so it's not that it's been left unresolved or I've 
like not grasped the idea of what happened it was just like at times while i was re whilst i was reading it I, it almost felt like i was in a bit of like a mind fog um just like trying to figure out like what was happening and it felt like as i said before the explanation came sort of abruptly in a way the thing is i was leaning towards maybe a 3.5 but i think i might actually give it four stars because i did really enjoy it and i think that the um, the writing and the setting and the atmosphere was really good and I could 100% imagine this being made into a film like I think it'd be a great horror movie I, I ended up really enjoying it I think that like my enjoyment level was equal like even throughout the whole thing I really enjoyed it I think I am going to give it four stars as I said I didn't feel a personal connection to the character to the main character but I did think that she was a very very cool main character to read about she's like very kick-ass like she arrives at this place and she's like sleuthing around. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to pick up next. I have put a poll on my Instagram with or like a, a question thingy with Bob to ask people what I should read and the four options were Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston, You Should See Me in a Crown by someone that I, I can't remember honestly and then finally Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. That was that was a little update and I will speak to you later. Hey guys, so it's Sunday today. I haven't updated the vlog in a while. I think the last time that I did was on Saturday. No, not on Saturday, on Friday. On Friday, like after I'd updated the vlog and I was talking about the poll thingy that I did on my Instagram to see which book I was going to pick up, I picked up Amara and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston and I think I'm on like page 200 and... 30 or something like that so I'm pretty far into it I'm really enjoying it I just like haven't I don't know I've just been kind of busy doing other things so I haven't had the chance to update the vlog and talk about it but I've really really been enjoying it and it's just proving that I need to pick up more middle grade I tend not to be drawn towards middle grade but this book is so good like it's this type of middle grade and I think modern middle grade like middle grade nowadays is proving to be just as serious and just as important to read as all other books so it's definitely driving me to pick up more middle grade in the sort of same area if you didn't know amara and the night brothers is basically about this girl whose brother went missing and he was like a bit of a prodigy he was just like super smart and like super talented at everything and suddenly he just went missing and a lot of people presumed that he was dead but she's like still trying to look for him she still wants to find out she thinks that he's just gone missing she doesn't believe that he's dead and one of the really interesting things about this book is that the main character is african-american and she lives in you know a not particularly nice area and because of the color of her skin and the area that she lives in she always gets put into the box of like the reason that your brother's gone missing is probably because he got into some stuff that he shouldn't have got into like selling drugs or you know just got into gang life or something like that and people just automatically have this prejudice because of the fact that she's black at the beginning of the book she basically gets this invitation to go and do this kind of summer camp that her brother did and when she goes there she finds out that it's all connected to magic and they're basically training these students these people these kids to become you know different things within this bureau that they have basically it's like a bureau for all supernatural things basically that's where her brother was her brother was like a really really well-known agent that worked there and he went missing and then she's trying to uncover that and she finds out something about herself at the beginning as well which people automatically put labels on her because of that um so she kind of reflects and like people ask her are you ready for this considering you've just found out this thing about you and now all of a sudden people are going to be you know have prejudices against you are you going to be ready for that and she says well yes because i've been dealing with it my whole life because i'm black so it's just a really interesting parallel i think that it's a super important book for kids to read because it's the kind of thing where they're going to read it and enjoy it for the plot but they're subconsciously going to get this you know information about what it means to be a black child growing up in a not so nice area so it's a really interesting book i'm really enjoying it i think right now i'm around about 4.5 stars i'm very excited to see where it goes and i know that the sequel is coming out i think 
next year sometime so that'll be really fun to read as well so i think i'm just gonna leave the video here if you enjoyed this video then feel free to subscribe it means the absolute world to me you can like this video go and watch some of my other videos if you enjoyed this kind of content and i will see you in my next one